Yo, Darius Britt here, and this is... Intro to camera lenses for filmmakers and photographers, but mostly filmmakers because this is a filmmaking channel. I did a lens video a while back, but then I woke up two weeks ago, and then a strange thought occurred to me. You know, I kind of want to redo that video. I'm gonna redo that video. Whether you're new to photography or filmmaking, all of this lens business can be super confusing, so I'm gonna try and rifle through all of these basic concepts and things, and I'm gonna try to make it as painless as humanly possible. I do believe it about that time, let's get into it. Categories. We've got two categories, prime lenses and zoom lenses. A zoom lens has a range of focal lengths, and you can zoom in and out, very convenient. A prime lens only has one focal length. It's fixed, does not zoom in and out, not as convenient. Three types of lenses, wide, normal, and telephoto. More on that later. One of the first things you'll see on the lens, on the front or somewhere on it, is the manufacturer's name, focal length. Each lens has what's called a focal length. The focal length is usually marked on the lens. You'll see a number with two M's behind it for millimeters. If it's a zoom lens, there will be a number range indicating the zoom range. This one goes from 10 to 18 millimeters. Technically, focal length is the distance between where the lens focuses incoming light and the camera's digital sensor, but it's a lot easier to think of focal length as a magnification of the image. So a higher focal length means higher magnification and a lower focal length means lower magnification. If I took a camera, stuck it on a tripod and photographed a subject changing only the focal length, not moving the camera, it'll look something like this. Again, the tripod is not moving. We're just changing the lens and the focal length. Aperture. There's an opening in the back of the lens that opens and closes. This is the aperture. The next few numbers on the lens refers to the aperture. The aperture is a ratio of one and another number. The other number is the maximum aperture or the widest the aperture can open up. The lower this number, the more light the lens can take in. It might get confusing when you see two numbers here. Which is the maximum aperture, 4.5 or 5.6? Well, it's both. This means that the lens has a variable aperture. So when you zoom, all of the optics inside are shifting. Because of this shifting, the lens takes in less light toward the end of the zoom range, resulting in the aperture changing. You can see it in camera as well. Notice how when I zoom in, the image darkens slightly. Again, that's because the aperture is changing. You mostly see this with cheap mass-produced zoom lenses like this kit lens. Not necessarily a bad thing, it's just, it is what it is. It's something to be aware of. Your more expensive zoom lenses have what's called a fixed aperture. There are complex mechanisms inside that allow you to maintain the max aperture throughout the entire zoom range. Like this Canon 70 to 200 millimeter L series lens. At 70 millimeters, the max aperture is 2.8, and at the end of the zoom range, 200 millimeters, the max aperture is still 2.8. The pricier lenses tend to perform a lot better in low light shooting conditions because their aperture can open up wider to like 2.8, 1.4. They're considered fast lenses. This kit lens would not be great for shooting in low light conditions because the widest this aperture can open up to is 3.5 this would be considered a slower lens or a slow lens. Here's a shot with a lens that could only open up to 5.6, and here is another shot with a lens that could open all the way up to 1.8. See the difference? We get so much more light. Field of view. The field of view or the angle of view is a fancy way of saying how much stuff you can see in the frame. If I take a shot of this toy on a 10 millimeter lens, we have a very large field of view, which means we can see a lot more of the environment around the toy. If I take another shot of that same toy at 200 millimeters, you'll notice that the field of view is very different. It's so narrow that we don't see much of the environment at all. Lenses that provide a field of view that's about what the human eye can see are considered standard or normal lenses. These range from about 35 millimeters to 70 millimeters. Lenses that provide a wider field of view than what the human eye can see are considered wide angle lenses and these are pretty much anything that's less than 35 millimeters. Lenses that provide a narrower field of view than what the human eye can see are considered telephoto lenses and these are pretty much anything above 70 millimeters. Perspective. Different focal lengths will alter the perspective as well. Wide angle lenses exaggerate the size of anything closer to the camera making it appear larger. I'm shooting this episode on an ultra wide angle lens right now 
So as an example, my thumb is closer to camera, so it looks bigger than my head. And they also expand or exaggerate distance, making anything that's farther away from camera appear even further away. Let's see what happens if I place these two toy figures five inches apart from each other and take pictures of them with different focal lengths. If we look at the first photo on a wide angle lens, the toy on the right looks a lot smaller than the toy on the left. It also looks further than five inches away. Wide angle lenses exaggerate distance. Wide angle lenses lenses are great for making smaller objects appear much bigger to draw more attention to them. Wide angles also allow us to feel much closer to the actors or subjects because we can see more of their environment with a wider field of view and we're literally closer to them in terms of perspective. The lower the focal length, the more of the environment you pull into the frame. Wide angle lenses are 24 to 35 millimeters, ultra wide angle lenses are 16 to 23 millimeters, and fisheye lenses are pretty much anything less than 16 millimeters. Really wide angle lenses bend light more strongly than regular lenses, which gives you a really deep depth of field everything is in focus. Lens distortion. Wide angle lenses tend to produce lens distortion because they bend light very differently than normal or telephoto lenses. So you can get barrel distortion. Another name for it is bowing or arcing where straight lines appear to curve slightly or extremely depending on how wide the lens is. Also things closer to camera at the edges of the field of view can get warped or distorted. So here's a ball shot at 100 millimeters. Notice there is no distortion because it's pretty much telephoto. At 50 millimeters, it's still pretty clean, no visible distortion. At 24 millimeters, we're considered wide angle, definitely starting to see some distortion and warping around the edges. At 15 millimeters, we're in the ultra wide territory. The ball loses its shape around the edges of the frame. At 10 millimeters, the ball takes on more of a pill shape around the edges. Compare it to an earlier shot at 100 millimeters, the distortion is pretty severe. Lens compression. Longer focal length lenses 70 millimeters and above compress distance. So background objects and foreground objects look way closer than they actually are. Remember that pic that I took earlier at 10 millimeters? Let's take another pic of the same toys going telephoto on a longer focal length. Remember the position of this tripod and how it looks in the background here for the next shot. So here's a pic of the toys at 200 millimeters. The toy on the right looks much closer to the toy on the left now. A lot closer than five inches. The toy on the right even appears to be the same size as the toy on the left. If we look closely, even the tripod in the back is way bigger and appears much, much closer to both the toys in the foreground. Essentially, the background and the foreground are compressed. Everything has been flattened. Because of the flattening effect that longer lenses have, it tends to be more flattering to facial features. So when you're shooting supermodels or very stylistic glossy commercials, everything tends to look better on a longer lens. Longer focal length lenses are also great for isolating a subject in a frame as well because you see a lot less of the background due to the narrow field of view and they have a smaller depth of field which is how you end up with that creamy out of focus background. Our eyes are naturally going to be drawn to the only thing in focus which is the actor or the subject. Next, if you're using a zoom lens you'll see the focal length indicator marked on the side of the lens or it could be on the top of the lens. This this one goes from 10 to 18 millimeters. You can zoom between the various focal lengths by turning the zoom ring. You might also notice that the lens gets longer. You usually see this with lower end zoom lenses. The pricier zoom lenses have what's called an internal zoom where the lens doesn't visibly extrude. You've got your focus ring. Here we can focus on anything from 0.25 meters to one meter away or 0.82 to three feet away. You'll also see a figure eight looking symbol lying on its side. This marking means infinity. What does that mean? Well, the simple version. If you're trying to focus on something that's too far away to focus on, like the mountains. If you move this to the infinity mark, they'll be in focus. You'll also see a switch that says AF and MF 
for autofocus and manual focus. If you are shooting narrative films, this should be on manual focus. We are filmmakers. We do not let the camera decide what to focus on. You might also see a switch that says stabilizer. I personally never use the built-in stabilizer on the lens because you might get some funky things when you're using it while you're shooting video, but some filmmakers use it. There are much better ways to stabilize the image like using tripods, dollies, shoulder rigs, steady cams, jibs, etc, etc. Filters. The next number you'll see on the lens is the diameter. You'll see a circle with a slash through it and a number next to it. If you want to use any filters or lens caps, you will need this number to get the correct size. Macro. If you have a lens that is capable of macro photography, it'll say the word macro on the lens somewhere. You'll be able to focus on subjects or objects from a really short distance away and achieve close-ups with more detail than the human eye can see. You can think of macro photography as the cinematic equivalent of a magnifying glass. There are different variations of macro lenses. With macro photography, the longer the focal length, the greater the magnification. So if you've got like a 60 millimeter macro capable lens, then you, you know, you might be able to use that for product photography. But if you're trying to catch all the details on like a fly's face, then you're probably going to want to go to a hundred millimeters or more. One thing to remember about shooting macro is you will end up with a really shallow depth of field. So if you want whatever you're shooting to be completely in focus and not just like a small piece of it, then you're going to have to pour more light on it and close that aperture down so that you can get more in focus. On the back of your lens, you'll see a colored dot. This is the mounting marker. It lines up with the identical dot on your camera so you can mount the lens onto the camera correctly. You should never have to force a lens onto a camera. If it's not lining up, then you're probably doing something wrong. Lens mounts. Digital cameras that can use interchangeable lenses have different mounting systems or connection points. These different mounting systems ensure that the lens connects to the camera the way it was designed to so that light passing through the lens will fall onto the sensor correctly. Most lenses and cameras have contacts which allow the lens and the camera to communicate information like autofocus, aperture, various settings back and forth. When you change the settings in the camera, this connection allows the lens to know what settings to use. Some of the most common mounting systems are the PL mount, the Canon EF mount, the Nikon F mount, the Sony E mount, there are plenty of others. Sometimes this can get a little tricky because manufacturers make various types of mounts so you can get a lens that say is like a Canon EFS mount and it won't fit on a Canon camera that just has an EF mount. The moral of the story, if you're buying or borrowing a lens, make sure you get the lens with the correct mount. If you do run into a situation where you have a lens and a camera and they're two different mounting systems, there are adapters that you can get, but that's as far into adapters as I'm going in this video. Prime lenses. As I mentioned before, prime lenses are fixed. They only have one focal length. They do not zoom, but there are advantages to using a prime lens. One, prime lenses tend to be smaller in size and lighter, which makes them more portable. Their construction is not as complicated as a zoom lens. They have far less glass and they're also faster, which means they can open up to wider apertures, taking in more light. It makes it a little bit easier shooting in places with low light. Two, prime lenses tend to produce sharper images than zoom lenses. This is one of the reasons why filmmakers prefer to work with primes. Three, because primes open up to larger apertures, you can get really shallow depth of field. Four. They're generally cheaper. A really nice expensive prime is not going to be as expensive as a really nice zoom. Again, the zooms have all that added complexity, all those moving parts and optics. Prime lenses are definitely not as convenient as zoom lenses, so if you want to get closer to your actor or your subject, you've literally got to get up and move closer to your subject. Prime versus zooms. If you're doing lots of videography or documentary style shooting, where you don't have much control over your environment, then you're probably gonna wanna work with some zooms. If you're recording live events, you do not have time to be constantly swapping lenses or else you're probably gonna miss shit. The range of focal lengths allows you to zoom right in on the action. And also, if you're gonna be in really dusty, sandy, dirty places, you don't wanna be swapping lenses in these environments as you're gonna get dust and stuff all over your sensor. But if you're doing narrative style filmmaking or music videos or commercials and you've got adequate control over your environment, meaning you've got actors, you control the lighting, you control the set dressing, etc, etc, then primes are definitely the way to go. You'll want that sharper image, you can do lens swaps, plus you've got the lower light performance with the wider maximum apertures. If you're literally just starting out and you got no money, just use the kit lens. Use what you got. Cinema lenses. This is a 50 millimeter photography lens, and this is a 50 millimeter cine lens. Cinema lenses are designed specifically for filmmaking, whereas photography lenses 
are designed for photography, but you can do both with them. So there are a few differences between cinema lenses and photography lenses. The focus throw on a cinema lens is a lot longer than a photography lens. With a bigger focus ring and longer throw, it's much smoother and easier to rack focus, especially when you're opened up to a wider aperture. With the cinema lens, finding focus and racking with the subject is a breeze because you've got the nice range. You can rack nice and slow and smooth. But with photography lenses, the focus ring is so small, it's easy to blow the focus or miss the mark the smallest adjustment shifts the focus so much that it's hard to rack. The markings on the side of cinema lenses are more in depth. There are no autofocus motors inside of cinema lenses, meaning there's no autofocus. You shouldn't be using that anyway. Filmmakers don't use autofocus! They have dedicated rings to control the aperture. Photo lenses usually don't have aperture rings. You can only control the aperture through camera settings. Cinema lenses typically have much sturdier construction and offer a sharper image with more contrast. Lens breathing. Photography lenses were never designed for filmmaking. They were designed for photography. So when you rack or pull focus, with a photography lens while you're shooting video, you can get what's called lens breathing. Essentially, lens breathing is when the focal length changes slightly as you rack or pull focus. I'm shooting this test with a 20 millimeter lens here. It's a fixed focal length, and as I rack focus from the front of the room to the back of the room, or from the back to the front, the composition changes slightly. You can really see it if you pay attention to the edges of the frame. The space between the edge of frame and this chair completely disappears when I rack focus. That's the lens breathing. Here's the 18 to 135 kit lens. The change in framing is even more obvious here. This clock almost completely disappears. This is a common problem when you're shooting with non-cinema lenses, and it's even worse if you're shooting with really cheap zoom lenses or kit lenses. You don't see lens breathing as much with the pricier cinema lenses because they're designed not to do that. You can rack focus all day long and you're not really gonna see too much of a change in composition. Cinema lenses can get really pricey. Canon Cine Primes like this one run about $5,000. The Benchmark Cook S4s go for $20,000 and higher. <laughs> That's a lot of money! Do I really need that? That really depends on what you're shooting and what you're using them for. If you're shooting documentaries, you, you probably don't want to use cine lenses. They're, they're very bulky, they're very big, they're very cumbersome. But if you're working on a narrative film or a commercial and you've got a budget, a film crew, and a focus puller, then they are great. Rinse yourself a few and they'll make your life a whole lot easier. Cleaning lenses. Start with a blower to blow off any dust. If you've got any stubborn particles or smudges, you can put some lens cleaning solution onto a microfiber cloth and then clean the lens. Don't ever put the solution directly on the lens. You can also use a lens pen to really work those smudges out, but make sure there's no dust on the lens first or you'll scratch the coating on the lens. The last option is breathing on the lens and rubbing it in with a shirt if it's soft enough. Hold up. Now, I know you didn't just say what I think you said. On a professional level, this is an absolute no-no. And it can probably get you fired, but if you're new and you're young and you just got your filmmaking stuff and you don't have lens cleaning materials yet, you'll be fine. I've been in a pinch, I've done it before, it's not the end of the world. You should definitely never, ever, 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 ever really do that with your, like, really expensive lenses, though like ever. Lens protection. There are two ways to protect your lenses. One is screwing a UV filter on the end of the lens, so if anything hits the lens, it's gonna crack the filter instead. It actually works. A lot of people don't care for this method because if you spent some serious cash on some good glass, the last thing you wanna do is degrade your image quality by putting cheap glass or cheap plastic in front of it. The second is using a lens hood. Aside from flagging unwanted lens flares, it also acts as a bumper for your lens. <sighs> Well, I think that about covers it. That was a long one. And also, if you've got a lot of questions about filmmaking or how to get started, or you're looking for some general guidance, I also do chat with me sessions. I will leave a link to that in the description section. Well, that's all I got for you. If you enjoyed what you saw, please like, go subscribe. You can find me on the social medias, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, or the Twitter, baby. You can also check out my second YouTube channel, Darius Britt, where I vlog about my adventures on the film festival circuit, my first feature-length film, unsound, live casting, vlogs, etc., etc. I do believe that's all I got for you. Suckers, deeper, da, booyah.